I, I've I've gone the other direction. Were you? They need to get this done, deal done sooner rather than later. Mm. I would not let Dak get to Miami the third game on the schedule and let him put up six, seven touchdowns. Yeah. I wouldn't let it happen. The Dallas needs to get this done in a hurry. They do um, because the price is only going to go up. Uh, you got to think about it. By his performance, by the team's record, it's just going to inflate. Uh, you look at it, even if he has a suspect game or two and they haven't signed his deal yet, he's going to be able to lean on his body of work and say, I have won a playoff game in January. Did Carson Wentz? So then you can't even fall down to a number that's going to make it team friendly. And if you want to have the wild card of the franchise tag out there, you're really going to play that game with Dak Prescott right now in terms of the cap going up 10 plus million every single year and playing that waiting game. So get it done, get it done before this next game because I think it's just going up. We have a voice of reason and Stephen Jones, and then you have the emotional Jerry Jones after the game. So basically, you remember the day when uh, you win a game and the food's better in the cafeteria? You know, yeah. Oh, man, shoot, we won? Food's going to be good this week? Well, the food's good this week, so get it done. You know, Jerry's in a good mood. Steven's, you know, excited about it. Dak wants it. It's, it, it get it done. But big picture-wise, I don't think a week makes a difference. I don't think a pick, an incompletion, a touchdown pass. He's got a body of work. He's, he's their future. They're not going to let him get away. They're going to get it done. They're on a roll. You got the linebacker. You know, you got the running back, quarterback, and the receiver, and they'll be happy for years. Yeah, I think that that's what makes it super sensible for Dak to say, we don't need to rush. Yes, they need to get it done, and they need to get it done now for all the reasons that have just been stated. You have paid out a king's ransom to be able to try to finish this thing off to get that Super Bowl championship. And so by doing that and saying, okay, we're going to invest in this, we're going to invest in this guy, we're going to invest in that guy, you're down to Amari Cooper and Dak Prescott. The more Dak performs, the more he's going to want, the more his agents are going to want. And the reality of it is, is that, in my opinion, I think every week does matter. I think every week that he plays well – or plays above the, the status quo or, or maintains being at that top upper echelons of quarterbacks, there is less justification. There's less negotiating room for Dallas. And so while you still have an opportunity, I say you go after it and try to get it done, shore it up now. Here's the deal. Let's go back. Can you think of a Cowboy star that has, has ever left that organization and said something negative about the Cowboys. About Marcellus Jerry. Wiley. Um, yeah. <laughs> he said star. A star. Oh, but here's, star. But here's the point. I heard Troy say something. Oh, Jerry's going to take care of you. Well, here's Jerry. Jerry simply says, hey, look, you're our guy. Trust us. We're taking care of everybody. We're going to take care of you. Just trust us. They, he can trust them to get this done. You got a golf deal that now you can compare it to. You got all these other deals. I think Jerry says, trust me. He's, they say, Dak, go in this game. We'll get things but taken But, Jeff, care of. you can answer this better than anybody. H how is there a difference between dealing with the player and dealing with the agent? The agent, Todd France, who's had a very successful career, but he has a chance here to... Re if he can get Dak some incredible contract, that elevates Todd France even more. And so if I'm Todd France, I'm sorry, I play this like a gambler. <clears throat> and I'm a crapshooter. And you just sitting around waiting for the one hot roller. You take all them losses, take all them losses, and then you find that hot roller mm. and you double down and double down and double down yeah. and get all your money back. Dak, we've been waiting on Dak to throw for 400 yards for four seasons or three seasons or whatever. He does it. But he's done it before against these Giants. <laughs> I mean, he, he gets it done against these Giants. The conversation tells me that they're not close. They're not imminent. And I'll tell you why. Arthur Blank came out this summer and said, Julio Jones will be the highest paid wide receiver. And then it eventually got done. What we're seeing in Dallas right now is still this schism between you and you're talking about Jerry and Steven and I talking about Dak, but there's still no we. And when I hear Arthur Blank and when I hear that deals are being done that are this level, highly priced players on your roster, you have to get to that understanding that the, the narrative, the conversation, the pronouns, everything changes in language. Right now, we're hearing a father who really owns the team saying one thing, his father, his son pumping the brakes on that, and Dak just staying pat. That's not going to get it done. Someone has to concede for the Cowboys' way. We talk about the Patriots' way. What's the Cowboys' way? We know we want them going forward. 
pay him now or pay him later. But if you pay him later, you're going to pay him greater. But I think I think the Ezekiel Elliott situation shines a, a very positive light on what's taking place right now. Whether they're, whether they're close or not, I think they all realize the realities that exist if Dak is continuously having success moving forward. So I think in terms of the language and how you're saying, you know, well, if he or if they, not not a us and a we thing, I still think that you have to posture a little bit when you're negotiating You know what the contracts. difference is, Zeke is? They never use the ammunition that they could use against Dak, which is, I don't know where we really grade you. Zeke, it was a it was a definitive. But, but we isn't know that who but, you are. but isn't that the point of the conversation, right? The point of the conversation is if we're still weighing body of work, we don't necessarily know who you are. The more he plays well, the more you got to sit there and say, well, he's showing us. Isn't that the whole reason for waiting anyway? But to You're Whitlock's showing point, us. The Whitlock's point, the, the the floor is so high right now, and Todd France can be sitting there saying, you know what? I'm just going to wait this thing out because you guys are still grading. That Jerry would Jones be foolish. Changed. That would be foolish I if agree. they don't give him the if they give him the number that he's looking for. That's foolish. If you can get the deal done, you get the deal done if you're the player and the agent. But at the same time, if the franchise is not pushing hard to get the deal done, then you keep playing as though yeah. you have the money that you need or you keep playing as though I have the chip on my shoulder to get the contract that I'm looking for. It could end bad in the situation for, for the Dallas Cowboys having to pay a whole lot more than what they're probably being asked to pay right now if they play that crap game. But in the end... If they do play that crap game and he doesn't perform as well, which you'd have to assume he is going to perform well right. because of the type of team he's playing for, right. you're going to have to pay more later. Jeff, do you believe in team-friendly contracts? Would you make that argument to a quarterback? Well, I would believe in it, but I'm not going to expect a quarterback to buy into it. You know, that's, <laughs> I sell it. that's it. But, but think about the dynamics of this whole offseason. You know, okay, you want to get the quarterback done, but and we don't know. We think he's pretty good, but we don't know if he's good. But when does he play really good? Well, he plays really good when that running back's next to him. Mm -hmm. Well, the running back, where is he? He's out training someplace because we haven't signed him. So you got the running back signed now. Now you got the quarterback playing well. Now they're sure they see the, the picture becomes clear. You know, and that's why the Zeke thing was such a big deal. Forget about the things that were said back and forth and between that. It's just negotiation. So you got a lot of different moving parts, but get the running back thing done. They did. And now let's see. Watch, watch him play a couple weeks right here. And then if we're close, you, you finalize the deal. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak for Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.